thanks and bless his holy name. Ja, ja, ja. Rastafari. Oh, shalom, Rastafari. I want to deal with this question right here, and I give thanks to the contributor who put this one up right here. If Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, what did he learn? Now, that was very well put. Give thanks for that. Um, I know I've been speaking on this, but just to see it in this simplicity, this this caption photo right here, um, this teaching tool right here that, that asks the question, if Moses, according to Acts of the Apostles, let's go to Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, right, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. But what we want to disclose is the half of the story that hasn't been told or has been greatly suppressed among modern Western Gentile Christianity concerning Moses and concerning the Exodus and concerning ancient Egypt, the land of Kemet. Now, this is a big issue overall, but this point right here no doubt will expose the hidden thread, right, or the cord that connect the spiritual pearls, right, and the pearls of wisma, the tibeb, the chokmah, together. If Moses, right, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, what did he learn? Now, a more correct translation of that verse, according to the Book of the Seven Seals, the Metzhaf Kedus, or the Bible of His Imperial Majesty, Revised and Hard Bible, actually puts it as he was learned in all the wisdom of the Gibbs Och, not the Gibbs Awian Och, or the Gibbs Awian. The Gibbs Awian would be Egyptians, and Gibbs Och, Gibbs, Gibbs Och would be Egypt's. Now, this points to a knowledge of the fact that there are more than one and was more than one Egypt. Now, in Acts of the Apostle chapter 7, we have the address of Stephen Estefanos before the council. And the theme of Stephen, who is the first martyr of Christendom, the theme of Stephen, and let's bring this over here. The theme of Stephen, all right, bring this out right here. The theme of Stephen was concerning the unbelief or the lack of the imuna, the, the imnet, the amen, the lack of the amen of Israel, of the beta Israel and of the Israelites. So here we have, this is from the Tawahedo Church of Ethiopia, right? This is where Stephen was uh, was martyred. He's the first Christian martyr. Now, within the revelation of the King of Kings, there's also an interesting connection to Estefanos, i.e. Stephen. In fact, the last place that his majesty was known to go into before he had, according to them, the original and the authentic testimony disappeared was a church or a monastery known as Kedus Estefanos. Did you know that? You know, was the last place what, when His Majesty allegedly was under house arrest, every day he would go to pray in the church or the monastery. There was a monastery, a local church, I think it's in Addis Ababa, one of the brethren going to Ethiopia. We talked about this some years ago. He went there and um, he actually said that he spoke to ones and there's a there's a particular area there where four priests were killed because after the derg um, took, which was the ones who in the coup, the creeping coup against his majesty when the Illuminati in Ethiopia, that they took him there to pray. He would go in um, basically by himself go in to pray come back and they'll take him back to where they were keeping him under house arrest but this one particular day when he went in to pray he didn't come out 
And the guards or the soldiers got very worried. And then they saw like four priests that were coming their way, right? Um, and they asked, did you see John Hoy? Did you see his majesty? And they said, no, they did not. And the soldiers being really panicked and freaked that they searched all over, they shot these particular priests. And that incident has been memorialized right outside of the church that bears the name in Addis Ababa of Kedus Estefanos. So this is a little background of why in the Rastafari revelation, Stephan is very important to us. But we have to, first of all, get a groundation of the word, the revealed word, the scripture, the Bible, the glory of his majesty. Now, putting that into context, we have to ask the question. Stephan here is giving an address. And in this particular address that he's giving, he speaks about how Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Well, why was what what, what Stephan said, what Stephan's sibkat, his, his extemporaneous um, sermon, the sibkat that Estefanos gave, what was so offensive about this to those who heard? And they said, Paul um, or Saul, Saul, was in that number. Some even say in scripture says that he consented to this particular um, murder, right? The murder of the first Christian martyr. And if we look at this right here, the first martyr and the first mention of Paul is given in chapter seven, where it says, and when they heard these things after Caduce Estefanos, Saint Stephen had spoken, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with teeth, with their teeth. But he, being full of the Ayla Ayrit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Kedus, he looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Jah. He saw the glory of Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, and Yeshua, the Yesu, standing on the right hand of Ha Elohim. So the sun was standing at the right hand, the S-U-N sun, standing at the right hand of the Abba Father, and said, verse 56, Behold, I see the heavens open. So this will be corresponding to this particular scene right here. He said that he saw the heavens open and the son of man, or the son of Adam, by right, standing on the right hand of God, of Ha Elohim, Baruchu, of the Father, the Abba. Then they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him. They ran up on him. They ran him down with one accord. They basically jumped Stephen after he preached this, after he proclaimed what he proclaimed in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. And they cast him out of the city and they stoned him. Remember that? Now they cast him out of the city. Remember Christ was crucified outside of the gate. They cast him out of the city and the witnesses lay down their clothes at, the, at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. So they laid down their clothes at this young man's feet, right? Whose name was Saul. Now within the tradition of the time, Right, that would be like who's the leader? Like we all take off our jackets and everything, and we're about to stomp and beat somebody, and we put them down at the leader's feet. Right? So this kind of signifies the the role that Saul, who persecuted the church, who later on was known as Paul after his conversion, right? And they stoned Stephen Estefanos, who was calling upon God, calling upon Jah and saying. Adoni I Yeshua Gietai Yesus receive my spirit. Now this is interesting because this is the very same thing that Yeshua said upon the cross. Right? This is the same thing that we find in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 24, Psalm 25. Because when Yeshua was on the cross, you do know when Yeshua was on the cross that he was chanting these messianic psalms. 
right? Beginning with 22, right? And then when we come to Psalm, to Psalm, um, Psalm 25, it says, to thee, to the I, Abba, Father, to the I, O Jah, do I lift up my soul, right? And, and this corresponds here with what it says, receive my spirit, lift up into your hands, I commend my spirit, or really my soul. And he, Stephen, kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Adonai, Lay not this sin, this chatiyat, this murder. They were murdering him. And he prayed for them. He said, lay not this sin to their charge. When they were stoning the first martyr of the true Christians, right? The true and the first Christian martyr, Caduce Estefanos. He said this. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Because why does he, he fell asleep? Because... The saints, the holy ones, the Kedusan don't die, right? Those who believe in Yeshua HaMoshiach don't die. They don't die. They, they, they go to sleep, right? They don't die. See, see, this is very important for us to understand. They go to sleep. They go to rest. They go to rest in the bosom of Abraham, but they do not die. Now, the point I'm seeking to make here before getting into our fuller point that we would like to, to make concerning Moses, right? What did Moses learn? That we learn that Moses learned, right? And throughout the whole scripture, we get to the New Covenant, the New Testament, the Hadith Kidan, the Burat Hadasha, and here we learn that Moses actually learned and was learned in all the wisdom, the, the, the mystery school so-called system as we're told or Egyptology or whatever other name that the Gentile scholars have given to this because we have to re-scrutinize, re-analyze this, right, from, from Jah's perspective, right, through the spectacles of the true and the faithful Ethiopia. We have to re-look at this right here because this is such an important verse here in the scripture and it seems as though a lot of modern Christians and, and others from a Western Gentile perspective or from failed Christianity would condemn lock, stock and barrel the ancient Egyptians. I mean how often you heard oh they were pagans, oh they were heathen, oh they didn't know nothing, oh they didn't believe in the true God and many Egyptians also came out with Moses because the Hebrews Right, was a spirituality, right? A spiritual way of life, or you might call it a religion. It was the last of the schools that still kept to the true interpretation of the ancients, right? In other words, something like what happened in Christianity. As we get into this more, it's very much similar. Here's where modern day Christianity bears a lot in common with ancient Egypt, right? Because if you look at Christianity today, with all the paganism and heathenism and the other stuff, Santa Claus and all this other kind of stuff and the whitewash and the perversion and coming in Jesus' name but doing the work of the devil and everything like that, you basically begin to recognize something must have gone wrong because if you read the scripture, based on the scripture, Right, just within the context of what the scripture is saying, if it is true, who could refuse that? And if one's actually lived the way of Yeshua, if they actually lived the way of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, imagine how different things would have been. But here's the good news there have been many Christians. Right throughout these past two days, two thousand years, who have sought to truly live in the grace of God in Christ, but many of them have suffered a fate somewhat similar to our beloved brother Stephen, Stephen Martin, right, or Caduce Estefanos. But here's the question I have for you, brothers and sisters: Is why? In other words, why or what was it about Stephen's extemporaneous subket, his 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 extemporaneous preaching here, that the listeners, right, the semiwoch, those who heard, what was it about what Edus Estefano said 
that cut them to their very heart. Right? One could say, well, where should we begin in chapter 7 of Acts of the Apostles? Yeah, you 